I, did you know that 10 plus 10 and 11 plus 11 are the same? 10 plus 10 is 20, and 11 plus 11 is 22. That's all I got. You want more jokes? They're going to be just like that. Don't apologize for it. <laughs> all right, let's get going. So today we're going to talk about tabletop exercises. Um, this is a talk I did at St. Con, if you went to that. It was fairly successful. Uh, like I said before, tabletops are something that everybody needs to do. It's not a really hard concept. It's not really a difficult thing to pull off but it's something that a lot of organizations don't do or do incorrectly or don't fully understand the importance of and the benefits of and don't put the time into making it happen. So um, I put together this talk because I feel strongly that tabletops need to happen, you need to do them. And so I'm, I threw it together to kind of get that word out and share, share to people why, why do you care about tabletops? Why does it matter? Um, so, really quick before we jump into this, who am I? I'm Matt Lorimer, i also known as Zodiac if you do anything with SaintCon. I've been involved with a lot of the local InfoSec organization groups for some time. Um, I, you see there, there's a DC Davis County. I helped start and run that with uh, several other people up in Davis County here in Utah. Uh, DC 435, I grabbed onto Pope's coattails and got started, helped st start and found that group. Um, like to ride bikes. I like to ride bikes because I like hot chocolate and donuts and I need something to keep up with those. I am losing that battle, but I still like to ride bikes. Mentioned I do a lot with St. Con. I've been on the board there for, or I guess I've been on the committee for St. Con for a long time, like 12 years or something. Um, if you've ever been to St. Con, I do the communities and contests. Basically, everything on the first floor is what I what I put on. If you haven't been to St. Con, it's time to rectify that this coming October, usually the last week of October. It's a ton of fun. Um, it, anyway, it's great. I, I put in there, I threw Tiva on there because uh, everyone laughs, and you've heard harassment already about I, it doesn't matter what's going on outside, I'm going to be wearing sandals because why don't you want your feet comfortable and who wants sweaty, gross feet all day when you can just wear, t wear sandals? I'm just saying. You could be comfortable and happy or you could be on rain wear shoes and stinky. Um, last one there, I put on my employer. I do work for a local company that sells and does tabletops, but that's, this is not a marketing slide. This is more of just getting information out there. So, how, how do the tabletop exercises? We're all gonna go, this guy's done a lovely demonstration of what it's gonna look like. If everyone can get up out of their seat, stand up, bend over backwards, and uh, I, wanna see some, I wanna see this happen right here. Uh, actually, no. Um, <laughs> there's probably three people in this room that could do that, and I'm not one of them. Um, every present, I am a firm believer, every presentation needs a too long didn't read, and this sums up tabletops to uh, right now, if this is all you need, if you get nothing else out of the slide right here, I'm not gonna read the slides to you. You're all competent humans, you can read. If it's too small, I'll make it bigger, but reading slides made dumb presentations. So they're there, at the end of the slide deck, there's a QR code if you wanna see what the slides re say later, scan the QR code, you get the full presentation with my notes, with everything there. Um, don't, if you wanna take pictures, you can, but if you, you don't have to. Um, so anyway, too long didn't read. Tabletops are there to help you practice your information security, your IR process before you hit, a, hit an actual incident and, and identify gaps and fix those gaps. Um, I personally put tabletops into two categories. You have more of the casual tabletops and you have more of the official tabletops. Um, informal tabletops generally are done in-house. They are usually shorter. As the name implies, they are less formal. But they are, um, they can be as simple as a game of backdoors and breaches. If you have not seen or played or don't know what backdoors and breaches are, this is a game by uh, Black Hills Information Security presented, and it's a card game that will let you simulate tabletop exercises. It's really good because it kind of takes, um, you, like everything else, you can be more or less formal with it, but it takes the tabletop 
and it takes some of the difficulties of, of leading a tabletop and puts it into the cards. The cards have the answers for you. So if you're not experienced but you still want to lead a tabletop, buy a deck of backdoors and breaches or 20 bucks. Um, if you don't know, come find me. I've got the full, all the decks, everything, if you want to see what they look like and what's involved in them. It's pretty cool. So the informal can be as simple as a game of backdoors and breaches. The formal is often um, done by a third party, but it doesn't have to be. It's often so they come in and they will follow a full step. Um, when I do them, I follow CISA, who is the, the, a federal cybersecurity agency. I follow the CISA tabletop exercise packet, the CTAP is what they call it. Um, this definition here um, is from CISA. This is like their definition of what a tabletop is. But um, a, lot of, a lot of the content in this presentation, this presentation mostly formal or follows formal tabletop exercises. But the formal information will also apply to informal tabletops. Um, kind of a disclaimer there. You can read the words here on the board, know what it is. Just I'm talking about formal, which is what CISA is talking about up here. And it'll also apply to informal ones. Um, this here. This talks about some, what do you need to make your tabletop successful? What do you need to actually get benefit out of it? And I would say even the informal ones where you don't do this stuff, you're gonna get benefit out of. There's, there's benefits across the board. This is, again, formal, so it's a tabletop, what are you gonna get out of it? Um, it's not actually an incident, take the stress out so everyone can feel comfortable, everyone's gonna participate. Uh, this is important because a lot of times you go in and there's a lot of, um, more time is spent protecting jobs than uh, actually answering the questions. And if you give crap answers, you're gonna get crap results. You need to make sure that it is a place where people are comfortable and willing to admit to problems, admit to faults. Uh, the second one there, don't get, don't get buried in the weeds. Like uh, I've been to tabletops where like, okay, tell me what your SIM query would be to find that in the SIM. Tell me, what your, tell me what's gonna happen in this piece. When you get buried in the weeds, everyone gets lost and it becomes a conversation between the SIM admin and the, and the facilitator, or between the sys admin who you're talking about digging through logs and the, and the facilitator. And you want it to be a conversation with everyone in the room. Try to keep them a little bit more high level. Uh, I find you get a lot more involvement as you keep everyone involved and stay out of the specifics in the weeds there. Uh, the fastest way to lose participants is to choose a scenario that doesn't apply. That next one there, I, I've seen it where uh, people give bank scenarios to a higher ed institution and they're like, I don't care, like it, it doesn't apply. And you can still gain, but you're gonna lose. Um, everyone's encouraged to ask for more information in the process, the tools available, facilitators are encouraged, um, facilitators are encouraged um, to have conversations and discovery. Uh, next one there, the scenarios should change to keep things interesting. I had an interesting one where I did a tabletop a couple weeks ago went out and spent two days doing tabletops with an organization and um, it was a large log logistics organization. And um, I, so I'm actually gonna pause and tell a story about this because th this was a really cool experience for me as the facilitator to do this. Um, shipping and receiving is not a new industry. It's been going for decades. And so we were given the challenge to meet with an uh, operations person within the logistics company and an IT person. And it was really easy for me with an IT background to stump the IT people, to give them challenges and give them scenarios that were like, oh, that's gonna interrupt my process and this is what I need to restore services. This is what I need to do. But these shipping people, they've been doing it for literally 2,000 years. They've been moving goods from point A to point B. And so you'd say, okay, this happens and you lose this resource, okay? And the operations people didn't miss a beat, didn't miss anything like, I'm going to go to this, this is plan B. And I'd say, okay, plan B fails. Okay, this is plan C and this is how I'm gonna do it. And I even pushed back to be like, you don't really know this, tell me more about what's gonna happen. And this, this operations person would outline what the process, like plan, they were on plan D at the time. He's like outlining immediately off the top of his head what plan D looks like. And from an InfoSec perspective, I'm like, dude, this is awesome. I'd love to get here where Plan D, like my, my SOC analyst and my IR team know what Plan D is off the top of their head and they can just spout it off to me and it works and it doesn't, you don't lose services and you don't lose data, you don't get exfil. This is amazing. And so it was, it was awesome for me to see 
what the end goal of tabletops is through this, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to go to the next slide, through this, watching these operations people, this logistics company go, because that's what tabletops are there for. Tabletops are to get you to where you understand not just how do you do the initial response, but what compensating controls exist to make the effects of that compromise as minimal as possible. Um, so, but as a part of that, with this company, when we did it, I had to do a lot of, I call them injects, people call them a whole bunch of different things, but just be, be ready to adapt the scenario. Sometimes you get in and you realize that the scenario is way over the head of the, comp of the people that are participating, and sometimes you realize that it's way too easy for them. These scenarios need to be adaptable, they need to change so that people stay engaged and stay interested. Uh, the last point on this slide, tabletops, uh, they're not there to prove a point. I've seen tabletops where it's there, and I, I have been asked when we're scoping tabletops to say, can you just prove that this guy that runs a sim is an idiot and doesn't know what he's doing? Can we, like, have that be the point of this whole tabletop? No. No, we can't. <laughs> That's not what we're going to do. <laughs> um, they, it needs to be there, and you, you're going to share information, you're going to do things, but it needs to be... You go in with open and with the intent to discover all gaps in the process. It's not to point out one person or to highlight one fault or to highlight one strength. I've also been asked, can, that, you know, I've, I've had people come to me and say, well, my manager's going to be there, and can you just make sure that I look really good? Can you, like, tell him that I'm amazing? I mean, if you're amazing, then it'll show up pretty quick. And if you're not, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> We try to keep it polite and nice and kind and not to call it out and say you're not doing a good job. But at the same time, like, if you have an agenda, that's, that's a good way to lose the tabletop and not get anything going. Okay, I'm getting a little bit in the weeds and I'm trying to, not to. This is a little bit of a dry subject. I promise if you actually do tabletops, they're way more fun than this presentation. The presentation is more, more info and a little bit, a little bit, in, a little bit deep, or, but... Um, CISA has phases to their tabletop. Uh, just like anything else, you can have your initial scoping. CISA is very, very detailed. It comes out of the federal government. It's based in run books. It's based in procedure. It's based in documentation, which if you're doing this for the first time, that is exactly what you need. If you've never done a tabletop, if you've never done anything like this, find that CTEP. It's free to download. You just go to the CISA website, download it there. And it's phenomenal. If you've never, it has enough checks and balances. I, I don't know how many people have military backgrounds or know people with military backgrounds. Run books are designed to take the decisions and the thought process out of things. CTEP is a run book. It's there. They even outline scenarios for you if you don't know what scenarios exist. Um, the four steps are you scope it, you go and you create the initial deliverables, you go and do the, you do the tabletop, and then you deliver the the post-exercise deliverables or the after-action report. Um, not a whole lot to go into here, not a lot of details. CISA gives four roles to a, to a tabletop. Uh, they're kind of boring that way, so I put them like this. Um, if you want to know what, how a CISA does their tabletop, it's, I, I find it way easier to think about the Avengers. So the players, the players are the superheroes. The players are the IR team. The players are Captain America. The captain. The players are, um, the, the, you know, the IR team is Captain America. The leadership of the, that's actually engaged in participating in tabletop, that's the Hulk. Um, you know, the interns there maybe are Groot, but they're participating and they've got something to contribute to. Um, the observers, that's the citizens of Sokovia. They're not really adding anything to the whole show, but they're kind of important for it. Uh, facilitators, that's kind of like Nick Fury. He's there to pull the strings, but really he's not the center of attention. He's not there the whole time. He's, he's kind of behind the scenes. You see him here, here and there, but the movie's really about Captain America, and that's what a real, this is what a real tabletop is. The facilitator isn't the superhero that's on the screen the whole time. The facilitator will have a big impact, but definitely not the main event. Data collectors are there. They're the, these are the, you know, Agent Coulson of, you know, Phil Colson, Maria Hill from S.H.I.E.L.D., they're there, they get a lot of stuff done, but you really don't even, you see them for like 30 seconds in the whole movie. Um, anyway, that's, this is CISA's tabletop roles. Next slide, everyone always asks, who do you invite? Who comes to your tabletop exercise? When I'm doing it, who, sh who should be in the room? Everyone. 
Uh, you don't want 100 people in a room for a tabletop. You do want it to be a discussion, and 100 people can't have a discussion. But within reason, you want people represented across all things. My favorite thing to do in a tabletop is you sit there and you start telling these stories and you see the management over on the side and the leadership and they're like, they think they're observers and they're kind of enjoying watching people squirm. And you turn to them and say, press just called your desk, what's your answer? Why are your services down? And they're like, well, this is a security incident. It's, I'm not secure. You're right, it is a security incident. Okay. If you don't want to answer, I mean, the intern over here, he, he's next on the list of their calling tree and he, they would love to talk to the intern about the incident. And all of a sudden management's like, no, 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 no. I'll talk about it, let's have a conversation. I'm like, what do you say? What do you do? Do you tell them no comment? Do you tell them we're down, we're coming back? Who do you ask for information? What do you do? And all of a sudden, it takes this for leadership and it's no longer a, that's a security problem, it's a, that's an organizational problem. This security incident is an organizational thing, not a security thing. And it, it's good to get everyone in the room so that they do that, but also, um, like the Cliff Notes version of the slide, all of those things up though, those are just random corporate roles I thought of. It's not anything specific. This isn't a checklist. This is just a bunch of titles I thought to throw on a slide. Involve everyone across the organization regardless of the role. You obviously need to have the IR team, the, the incident responders. You need the, the, the security analysts. You need some of the sysadmins. There are some roles that you need, but really you want to involve as broad of an audience as you can. Um, benefits of a tabletop, this is, uh, this, the benefits of a tabletop are varied, they're, they're pretty solid, this is kind of a generic slide to say it really does good. But really, first part, practice leads to familiarity. You don't want to first time you read through your IR plan is when you have a ransomware event. If you don't know what to do, you have to figure out IR while you're going through IR, it's gonna be a miserable process. Discussion and exploration leads to gaps in tool sets. I was actually just talking a little bit, a little while ago with someone about how, just how effective these are at finding problems that, you know, tools that you don't have, skills that you don't have, gaps in your program that need to be filled. If you aren't sure what you need to do next, do a tabletop and it'll really quick float to the top that, oh man, if we had this problem, we wouldn't, you know, we'd have no telemetry inside of this whole tech stack over here. Well, that's probably the next problem you should solve in your organization. Uh, it's a game. Friendships are made and strengthened. Trust is earned. That I have seen a lot of teams. This is really good, at, particularly when you get a diverse audience in the, it, from different teams. You get a lot of cooperation. That collaboration leads to, you're literally playing, friend, playing games with other people. It'll lead to friendships. It'll lead to um, building those relationships. Regulatory requirements. A lot of orgs have these. Uh, they suck, they don't need to be talked about a whole lot, but it does mean you have to do them. Uh, teams outside of InfoSec get some of the why of InfoSec. This is huge. You involve these other teams and all of a sudden the security, this, the, um, the developers are like, you're, the, InfoSec's kind of hated in a lot of orgs because, um, again, to replug Sean's talk like it was last time, we're gonna see if we can get this mentioned in every talk today. Uh, it's on YouTube. Sean Price gave a talk in St. Con about how a lot of InfoSec is a hammer, and they go and they beat on everything with a hammer. And that leads to a lot of antagonistic relationships, and a lot of people don't like the InfoSec team. If you invite them to your tabletop exercise, you're taking away the hammer, and you're making it more a partnership, and you're making it more a collaboration where you're saying, this is why I'm asking you to do this, because one day we're gonna have ransomware, and I'm gonna need to look at those logs. I'm not telling you to give me the logs because I just wanna be in charge of you and tell you what to do. I'm telling you I need the logs because we need the logs. Here's why we need the logs. I'm telling you, you need to start testing your, your supply, your uh, d library dependencies because it matters. And here's what not checking your library dependencies can do. And that's where tabletops can really be beneficial is it makes that partnership. And so instead of being, uh, a, a fighting relationship with the other uh, areas of the organization, it becomes a partnership with the other areas of the organization. Uh, six and seven up here are mostly the same. Make sure everybody's doing the same thing in a consistent way. I can't tell you how many times you get into a tabletop and you have one person who says, oh, this is easy, we do this, this, and this. And the person three people down is like, no, 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 no. 
Like, we don't, those aren't written down anywhere. The IR process says we need to do these other things instead. And you're like, you got a problem and let's talk about it. And as a good facilitator, you don't solve the problem. You just sit and listen to them and say, what is your IR process? What are you going to do? He says do that and he says do the other thing. Talk about it. And really a good facilitator sits and listens and sits and lets the organization discuss the IR process, discuss the incident, discuss the tools. Um, a lot of times they'll say, oh, we have this tool and this tool will totally solve that. Will it? You really think that your email gateway is going to detect like endpoint compromise? Tell me how. I'm interested in the story. Like, let's talk about it. Um, and sometimes they'll surprise you and actually have a valid reason behind it. And sometimes they'll surprise you'll be like, I didn't think so. But let the organization discuss this and figure that out on their own. Um, number eight is pretty similar to number three. If you can bring other in other teams, they all get the benefits too. Uh, right here. <laughs> in short, if you do a tabletop, you really will have rainbows, unicorns, puppy dogs, and sandals for the rest of your life. Uh, <laughs> but really, it, the benefits are huge. It, it is a very noticeable benefit. It does help your organization. It helps make things better. I want to throw this one in here. We talked about how you can do these internal, you can do informal ones, you can do formal ones. This is one of the things that I love to do is to help people um, it, as I do them. You shouldn't just do only informal or only formal tabletops. You should do both. You should do little games. You know, if, if you work on an InfoSec team, get together and play backdoors and breaches once a week, once a month, once or whatever. Have a formal tabletop once a year, once a, whatever your requirements are. I, there's no solid answer of you need to do this or you need to do that uh, outside of regulatory and compliance reasons. So, you know, if you're doing CMMC or something like that, then it's very prescriptive of you will have this tabletop on, at this interval and everything else. Aside from that, this is just one more tool to have that's convenient that works for you. But um, if, you're, if you're doing these, whether informal or formal, and you are facilitating the tabletop, you are leading the discussion, these are some of the tips and tips and tricks that I've um, had people share with me that I've discovered, that I've seen, that really make the tabletop more effective. Number one, never ever stop the discussion. If, there's, if people are talking, you just close your mouth, let them talk and let them go, I, I, within reason. Some, some guy will talk for 20 minutes if you let him. Um, but encourage conversation, let people clarify. Next, explore when, when they have compensating controls. Ask, ask things and be like, hey, what are some of the, you know, they're, they're like, we would pull that out of the sim. Okay, let's talk about your sim. What could cause your sim to go away? What could cause, by the way, if I'm using terms like sim that you don't know what they are, that's a logging system, it just don't hesitate to shout at me and tell me to stop talking and answer explain things better, but um, if you're saying, oh, we'd pull those logs out of the logging system and we'd be totally fine, we'd get that. I really like sometimes if the tabletop's going really well, I kind of turn it back and push it onto them and say, so let's talk about your SIM. What could cause that to go away? Sometimes it's a cloud-hosted SIM and they're doing software as a service and it happens. Cloud services have outages. What could, you know, what could causes of that being? AWS AWS West has gone down in the past. It has happened. It causes problems. So yes, your SIM could go down because Amazon has an outage. It could be that your SIM is running on some janky old JBOD storage array in your data center that is 15 years old and hasn't been updated, and you lose one more disk. Like, there's 20 reasons. And part of tabletop is exploring what failure points could be, what could cause the outages, what could cause the problems. And so turn that to them and say, what could cause your authentication system to go down? What things could happen to, to, to do this? You, these are tools you rely on, so, and you have the tools, you have the pieces, you know how to do the incident response. Let's talk about what could break your incident re response process. What could cause this to have issues? Um, the prompt can be anything. What, some of my favorite prompts are, you just start it with, you had it, you know, it, you don't have to lead them. A lot of times, particularly early in the tabletop process, if it's your first one, the way tabletops work is the facilitator will stand up front and they'll give you a prompt. And the prompt is just, it unfolds as the service desk finds it, as it unfolds in your organization. So 
you had a phishing attempt in your, in your organization. Tell me what you do. And you have them walk you through, okay, well, we search the mailboxes, we use safe links to disable the link and we turn it off, we pull the message from mailboxes, we do this, okay, great. Do you look and see who clicked the link? Do you, do you use that safe links telemetry and that data to detect who followed the link and who's been compromised or who's at risk because of that fish? Okay, what do you do with the, with the other data? What do you do with the information? But some of the most fun ones, if it's a more mature organization that knows what they're doing, you say, okay, you had a phishing link, you lead them with phishing, and uh, the scenario has nothing to do with phishing. The scenario is actually about an insider attack. But if you look at real incidents that happen in the real world, this is very common. You start with a fish, and as you're investigating a fish, you start to say, why is this data leaving the network over here? What's going on on this weird thing over here? Had nothing to do with the fish. The fish wasn't the attack vector. The fish wasn't involved. But because you're looking in, looking in and doing incident response, looking at data, looking at logs, you all of a sudden notice, hey, this guy over in accounting, he's been dumping our whole directory for like months. He does a regular offsite backup of our entire ERP. You should probably look into that. Um, and so this, your prompts, again, this is the adaptability piece. Make sure that it, it fits the org. If they're a mature org, give them a little deception. Lead them down the wrong paths. Get help, look, make them go through the process and see what, what tangential things. But also, when you're being successful, you've mapped this out in your mind. When I, do a, when I do a tabletop, my facilitator manual, I have like written the entire story of what I think is going to happen. I've written five different things of possible ways to make it harder or to make it easier. So that when I'm sitting there, I don't have to be like, oh, uh, you've got an answer to that one. Let me, what can I do? Um, John in accounting, he's the one, he's the one. Like, I don't have to think about it because I've written it all out and it's all there. You want to be prepared as a facilitator to make it as engaging as possible. Um, next one, lies are best hidden when they're based on the truth. Uh, most of my scenarios that I do are based on customer events where I get pulled into a customer to go help them with actual IR. We have a, I, you know, what? I did it once, I had an investment firm get compromised and we got pulled in to help them recover from a ransomware event and two weeks later, guess what my scenario was for that tabletop? I told the whole story, minus names, a few key details changed, a, few, a couple things you couldn't tell who it was, but those are by far the best, the best stories. And if you don't have stories that you've been involved in, read the news. Uh, you know, Caesars and MGM, more and more details and information coming out of that. If you don't know this, Maersk did, got compromised in 2018, and they were like phenomenally transparent about their entire process. What happened, how they found it, what, what went on through the whole process. Tell that story. The logistics company, I used the Maersk scenario for two of those. I talked to them and I adapted it to do two different ways and told them, walked them through the Maersk supply chain, pro, or the Maersk problems. Um, City of Dallas was compromised earlier this year. They released like an 87 page document on everything that happened in their compromise. How the initial, initial attack, where it went for lateral movement, what they did for recovery, how they found everything, everything happened. Um, one of the other things I do for a facilitator, I'm going over so I'm going to go quick now, but um, don't let them off easy. Most incident response, I'll be honest, I was, I was, I did SOC work, I did IR before I started doing what I'm doing now. Most IR, if you look at both either the NIST or the SANS uh, IR framework process, I don't know if they're official actually frameworks, but if you look at the steps that NIST and, and SANS outline for an IR process, most people do one or two. So NIST and SANS have six steps for IR. Um, I think SANS really has four, but it's the same six things. They just combine three of them into one step. Um, but they have six steps. And most people do one, maybe two of those steps in their IR. You see, find something compromised and you, re, you fl wipe it out. You, you completely um, you eradicate the, the uh, infection or you eradicate the incident. But really, you need to make sure they're doing identification, containment, eradication, recovery, and lessons learned. Make sure you're getting all of the pieces in here for your IR. Don't let them off the hook. And so as the facilitator, say, OK, you identified what the compromise was. Did you look for lateral movement? Did you do containment? Did you, um, 
do recovery? Did you do lessons learned? And make sure all of these steps are pro gone through because very often it's happened where, oh, sure, you caught the initial compromise. I, one of the things I did prior to this is I did pen testing. People will catch one or two of the things we did. Okay, that's fine. You, sure, you stole that. Or you, the one computer I used to pivot through to your, to your data center, you played whack-a-mole and you reinstalled that one, one system. That's awesome. I'm glad you didn't look at lateral movement because now I have a foothold in your data center and you didn't check that and I can do whatever I want where I actually cared about doing things in the first place. Uh, review findings at the end. These conversations are very beneficial because everyone in the room gets something, out, something different out of the process and give everyone a time to say what they learned and what they gained. Um, this one here, the facilitator basically is a DM. If you ever play D&D, that's what you're doing. People are going to come at you with weird crap. This here, uh, she, if, I, don't know if that's, I don't know if that's too small to read, but uh, he says, you're a defensive mage. You can't wall enemies to death. And her response is, it doesn't say anything about where I can build my wall. <laughs> and um, like, so here, the example I get here is, I, I talked before about fishing and other things. You think your VPN can identify a fish? Interesting, tell me more. Well, we use our VPN, it's an always on VPN and we check all the logs and I can tell you who clicked on the link because I have logs from every endpoint in the organization and we don't allow, you know, we've, we've sandboxed off these different things. I'm like, oh, you actually can get some telemetry from the VPN for your fish. I'm not saying you can detect it, but you can actually get some information. Good, let's go. Don't be, don't be totally, um, this is not a by the book event. This is a adaptable event. Let people tell you stories. Let people do things that are, that are creative and interesting. Um, so any, any questions or feedback before we're done? I try very hard to not roll my eyes at them. Um, it, it, that happens every time, every time. And one of the things I do is I preface this with this, I, at the beginning of my tabletop, I have a whole slide that talks about how this is all about hypotheticals. This is not a real event. I'm not saying you got, you got compromised, but I'm also not saying that I know everything about your organization. This is an exp exploratory thing for you and I. So if you say it can't happen, tell me why it can't happen. What, you know, I say you got fish and you say you can't get fish. I say, tell me why. And they'll be like, because we have abnormal and we have proof point and we have Mimecast, which you laugh, but I have seen people have several mails, email security solutions deployed. It's, you wanna throw money, go throw money, fine, whatever. Um, and they're like, I, we decided we didn't want fish, so we implemented these three or four solutions to prevent that. I have seen all of those solutions fail. I have seen them fail in parallel in deployments. And, I, and so you talk about it and say, Okay, let's just say, that's great, I'm glad you did that. Hypothetically, let's just say a fish got through. Or let's say, instead of fishing direct like that, they fished your personal Gmail account. Because tell me that nobody at your organization uses their personal email to, to do work. Is there anyone in here that can say that they have no one in their org using personal email to do work? <laughs> like, it happens all the time. People do dumb things. Okay, then let's say it wasn't a fish, it was a smish. You know, they were doing SMS phishing. What do you have to protect your SMS phishing? Okay, it was a social engineering call. It was phishing. It was a social engineering call to the help desk. And so that's part of where the adaptability piece is. If they're like, well, I've put all my eggs in this basket and you're never going to get this. Okay, let's adapt it. Great, what are you doing for this? It, it wasn't. And so. It's a combination of pivoting to a different technology or a different piece, but also communicating, say, tell me what you've done to protect. Because some orgs have done amazing things to protect. They've done really cool stuff. And they really have mitigated and created layered security that is very hard to penetrate on that front. So how are you gonna get around it? What are you gonna do? So it's both sides, I guess, is the answer to your question. Any other questions, comments?
And that, that's the hard balance. Like that, that is, that is the really hard part and the difference between a good facilitator and a bad facilitator. Uh, actually, that's not even good and bad. That's good and mediocre. Uh, most things tend to get into the, um, like the, the teacher relationship, the just up there lecturing. And so a good facilitator will keep a discussion going. And sometimes, I said stay out of the weeds, sometimes the answer is you've got somebody who's like, oh, I get that out of the sim. And you know that they can't get that out, they don't have that skill set. They don't have that. And so knowing when to say, okay, tell me about it. What table would you look at? What data set are you looking at? What search, you know, what, and I think that getting syntactically in there and being like, show me the syntax gets deep in the weeds and that's an easy way to lose people, but be like, what are you gonna search for? What event code? What events are you gonna look for? What? Knowing the balance of when to do that and when to say, okay, you looked in the sim, we're not gonna do that because no one else gives a crap and we all know you're full of it. Or we all know that you're actually amazing and you've been like months of training for Splunk or Sumo Logic, whatever your sim is, you're amazing. Let's, okay, you say sim, great, let's do sim. What it leads us over here. When do you move on, when do you go? And I think that's one of the good things about a facilitator is knowing how to, how to push back to make sure that it's a real event, but also how to let go so that it doesn't get stuck in a, it, it stays a conversation. It keeps moving forward and you don't get stuck it in the middle of, an event, of the research. What's that? That, that's my favorite inject right there. My favorite one. I turn to the one guy. Well, no, what I say, the one guy that has all the answers, I come and I say, PR is taking you. They need you to explain the incident to them. You can't answer for five minutes. They're, they are talking, they are doing a press release tomorrow and they need all the details from you. You can't talk for five minutes. And then you watch the rest of the room be like, oh. Or you say, your wife is sick and you need to go home. You can't talk for 20 minutes. What do you do now? And because that's exactly right. Like there often is one person who has all the answers, who does all the talking, knows everything. That's great until they get sick or the boss needs to talk to them or a hundred other things. Can the org survive that? So that, that's actually a really big thing. Any, any other comments, thoughts? Okay, this is, if you want the slides, this is the slides with all my notes, with everything there. Feel free to grab those. If you don't want them, I won't be offended about that either. Whatever works for you. Uh, thanks for your time, it's been fun. Like really, the whole point of this is to make you realize that tabletops have value. Even if you're not doing, you don't work for a company, if you're a student and you wanna learn about IR, play back doors and breaches. Get this stuff going because you will learn technologies, you'll learn it makes you think through the process of how do I detect a fish? What do I do? What do I care? What does it matter if there's a fish? How do I detect uh, LLM and R? What do I, how do I know if someone's doing, trying to inject proxy responses into Microsoft? How do I do this? What do I detect? What does it lead to? What goes? It's a great way to test processes, test people, and grow your experience. So anyway, thanks for your time. I hope you learned something, and I'm right on time now, I think.